الحكيم اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم I seek refuge with Allah from the Satan the accursed in the name of Allah most kind most merciful respected ulmas respected elders Sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. May God's peace be with you. I welcome you to this meeting. Here, did at speak on Rushdi. It is indeed a great honor for us all to have Sheikh Ahmad Didat amidst us once more. The internationally renowned Muslim scholar of the Christian Bible will share with us some of his experiences. He will tell us how in South Africa with a Muslim population of less than 2% They were about the first to succeed in having satanic verses banned. And how they were able to have Rushdi stopped from entering that country. We must bear in mind, sisters and brothers, that a British passport holder does not need a visa to enter that country. And South Africa is the country where apartheid is practiced. Ladies and gentlemen, it is also a privilege for me to introduce to you our chairman for today, Brother Sharif Malnik. Brother Malnik, alhamdulillah, embraced Islam some 10 years ago. He is a lawyer holding a Jewish doctor from the US. He is a successful international businessman and presently resides in London. Sisters and brothers, Mr. Sharif Malnik. Auz billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillah rahman rahim. Jazakallah khair. Sheikh Tidat, Brother Shamshad, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi Before I introduce the honorable and distinguished speaker, I have been asked to read this to you. Satan, being thus confined to a vagabond, wandering, unsettled condition, is without any certain abode, for though he has, in consequence of his angelic nature, a kind of empire in the liquid waste or air. Yet this is certainly part of his punishment, 
that he is without any fixed place or space allowed him to rest the sole of his foot upon. Has anyone here actually read or heard this passage before within the last 12 months? Put up the hands. Could, could you, sh with a show of hands, please. Has anybody actually heard or read this? One. Yes, I see one I, and approximately 6,000 people here. Uh, this is actually the first page, the grand opening, the prologue, if you will, of the Satanic verses. It is really the great hoax of the 20th century that with over a million copies sold, with people willing to defend that book with their lives, that no one has actually read the book. And if someone says they have read it, I'm sure they don't understand what they've read. Because if you have read this book, and you understand what you've read, then you would not have defended it, but you would have rallied against it. This book truly represents a conspiracy against the nation. We have been fooled, all of us. Satanic Selman aptly chose that passage, which I read to you, to describe himself with no abode, punished, and with no place to rest the sole of his foot. An interesting prediction. And yet, this book was given the Book Award. It is a standard of literature which our future generations will study and be influenced by. We cannot allow that to happen. You cannot afford to allow that to happen. I should like to mention, as many in our audience are familiar with our most honorable speaker, you may have noticed that today's program did not begin with a recitation from the Holy Quran. This is most unusual for our prolific speaker, as you are probably aware, if you have seen any of the 65 videotapes produced by Sheikh Vidat and his organization, the Islamic Propagation Center International. The Holy Quran will not be recited today because the speaker shall deal with the actual contents of the Satanic verses. I say the actual contents because I'm sure that you don't know what this obscene book contains, and you have proved it here today, one hand in 6,000. It is the vulgar nature of the Satanic verses which precludes us from reading the Holy Quran to open the program today. But, ladies and gentlemen, somebody has to do the job. Do not despair. Sheikh Ahmed Didat is here with us today, and he has done the job for us. He is the first person to deal with the contents, the actual contents of the Satanic verses, however distasteful this may be. He is not afraid to dirty his hands. For, in order to remove an impurity, one must necessarily dirty one's hands. Let us remember that it is Salman Rushdie and his defenders who have provoked and necessitated this response. I would like to warn the audience that passages from the Satanic verses will be read aloud. These passages are offensive to every decent man and woman. Unfortunately, there is no other way to properly deal with this subject. So I, I would suggest that we have two minutes, if there are any persons here who are prudish, or if there are any children here, I would suggest that they take this opportunity to leave the hall. You have been warned also in the advertisements that this is not for prudish men or women. It is necessary to lay out a few ground rules which, under which we shall operate today. We ask, or rather insist, that you remain calm and orderly. Do not attempt to break the stage security perimeter. At the end of the lecture, members of the audience are invited to ask questions related to the topic. Allow the speaker his uninterrupted time 
to speak, and then you may participate in the discussion by asking your questions at the appropriate time. I have no doubt that many who are present here today are genuinely seeking truth. Let our behavior today confirm that. It is my great privilege and honor to introduce a world-renowned Muslim scholar of the Christian Bible and comparative religions, director of the Islamic Propagation Center International in Durban, South Africa, the author of dozens of books, a great lecturer and debater who has debated with Jimmy Swaggart, the United States Evangelist, Professor Clark, Dr. Robert Douglas of the Zwimmer Institute, and so on and so on. His credentials are too numerous to list here. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, respected elders, may I present Sheikh Ahmed Didat. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإن أقبتم فأقبوا بمثل ما أقبتم به ولا إن صبرتم لهم لهو خير للصابرين صدق الله صدق الله مرة نزيم Mr. Chairman and brethren the subject that has been advertised as you read it in the paper was not the original topic of discussion this afternoon. The original topic as we wanted to advertise was the subject of this book. Each and every one of you have it. If you have it in that envelope, please take it out. Have a look at it. Everyone is supposed to have this booklet. The cover, it says how Sulma Salman Rushdie fooled the West. That is how we wanted to advertise in two colors, which we had planned. We sent it over the negatives for publication. But the so-called British free press, they couldn't stomach it. How Rushdie fooled the West. They said they won't advertise that. They won't take our paid adverts. Believe me, I am talking about your great country, which stands for freedom of speech and expression. For who? Not for everybody, for certain selected groups. This innocent advertisement, how Rushdie fooled the West, they couldn't stomach that. So we had to change it for their benefit to say a challenge to the giants of the British literary world these giants, the so-called giants, who are standing in support of Rushdie, I have been reading their statements. They said, never mind what he says, we support Rushdie. Never mind what he says. He is a god. He is their god today. Whatever he says, we support him. How can you deal with people like that? He said, come forward. Now I want to educate you, I want you to know what he says, because you haven't really read the book. That is why you talk like that. An amazing thing I'm telling you now, really speaking, nobody has really read the book, Muslims and non-Muslims. Because I'm meeting your people in this country, journalists, and I'm asking them, they're asking us, I'm asking them, have you read the book? Most of them say no, they're honest. But some of them, they said, yes, we have. So I asked them, what have you read? What have you read? He said, well, it's a very, very difficult book to read. I said, yes. So many people say that. What did you read? I will come to that. I will come to that in time. Now, this book came out in September, 88, I take it. And there was a furore among the Muslims of Britain. A dear friend of mine here in London, by the name of Arfaq Malik, an attorney at law, a lawyer, he faxes some pages of this filthy, dirty, satanic work to me for my attention. And naturally, 
any Muslim, any decent person on reading what those pages contain would be infuriated and I was infuriated. What to do? We said, this book should be banned. So we made an approach to, this, to the director of publications, a censorship board in South Africa, and showed him a few selected pages. And it did the job. It did the job. In a country where we are less than 2%, we have no vote, no voice. One white man can buy the whole lot of us out, lock, stock and barrel. One white man. That's what we are worth. And yet, we were able to perform a miracle. We beat most Muslim countries to the draw, except for India was the first. I, am, I'm, I feel that I, my, there'll be hardly anybody here who can contradict me, that we were the second nation in the world to have the book banned. South Africa, the land of apartheid, the pole cat of the world did it. How was it done? These selected pages, we take them over to the director and say, Sir, have a look at this. The Satanic Verses, page 461. You don't have to worry. This book is an instruction book. It's an instruction manual. When you read it, some of the pages and things that you miss out, you'll find them here. This is an instruction manual for you all. He reads, nigger eat white man shit. Nigger. You know who he's talking about? The Africans. He eat white man shit. You know this word shit. It was so difficult for me to use here, in this very hall. There was a debate and I wanted to use this word. And I skirted around and round, beating around the bush and I couldn't come to it. I couldn't say the word shit. But now I have to say shit because I have to quote him. I said, now you know, human dung, you know, cow dung. You know. What the hell? Therefore, you were warned. You were warned. He says, look, please, if you are hypersensitive, don't come. Don't bring your women and children with you. But you have braved yourself to say, now we are prepared to listen. We are in Britain. You know, these words that I'm uttering here, I can't utter in my own country because the book is bad. I can't quote the fellow. In my own country, I can't publish this book. This tape that you will see, in case that you want to purchase this tape, videotape of this meeting, you will be able to purchase it and enjoy it at home if you want to. Put your children one side. Put them to sleep when you see this. But in my country, I can't do anything. I can't touch the tape. I can't touch the book. <laughs> this is your privilege. You see, you have that freedom of speech and expression. I say, well, you enjoy so nigger eat white man shit. So the censor reacts. He says, this is racist. He is a racist himself. But he said, this is, a, this is rank racism. You know, how will the Africans react to this? This book is telling them that they enjoy eating white man shit. Because he has an afterthought, who? Satanic Salman. And on page 529, he says, black shit is bad. So, for this brown Britisher, black shit is, white shit is good, acceptable, but not black shit. Our census says, look, this should be banned. We say, boss. You say, boss. We say, boss. That's his language. You say, boss. This is your privilege. He says, you know, boss, sir, master, master. He is coming to South Africa to promote his book. He says, no, we can't have him. He says, boss, this is your privilege. So the book is banned, and he was banned from coming to South Africa. We could have done the same thing here. You see, but we didn't really read the book. It's an amazing thing. Nobody really reads it. You see, we get worked up emotionally. This is human nature. Something that hurts us, we have no time to think. 
If I was here with you during those days, I would have joined you in your marches, in your crying, in book burning, I would have been one with you. But you see, I'm at a distance. And from a distance, you see more things than what you are now directly involved. You are in it. You are under pressure, under attack. You are barbarians. They, you remind them of Hitler. Hitler burned books, so you might also create a Nazi party here and you know, overtake the country. All these fears, they well up, and now you are, have to battle with this. Now, I am qualified to speak on this for a number of reasons. Number one, you see, I am an elder brother of yours. To some of you, I'm an uncle. Some of you can call me grandpa. I'm an old man, number one. Number two, I have read the book. Nobody can say, well, look, did you read the book? And say, no, but you know, this is what people say. From here, say, so no, I read the book, number two. Number th three, I'm one of you. You see, to everybody, I'm a South African. But if I tell you that I carry a document with me, a British passport. British passport, 63-year-old passport. You believe it? There would hardly, hardly be a single senior citizen in Britain who would be having a British passport 63-year-old. If you open it, you'll see my picture when I was nine-year-old, what I looked like then. And I cherish it. Well, by God, I cherish it because of that picture more than anything else. But now I value it. I'm a Britisher by, by birth and by holding a British passport. I would, I'm, I would be looking forward to the pleasure of creating a senior citizens, British passport holders of 60 years and more. If your father or anybody, your grandfather has got a passport 60 years and over, let me know you would like to create a society in Britain. <laughs> so I am qualified. Now what? In retrospect now, because it's far away from all those happenings, now I can talk more freely. I said, look, what I would have done. I, I couldn't have. If I was in the midst of you, I couldn't have thought all these things out. It's impossible. See, when you are under pressure, under turmoil, and the mass hysteria that can be generated by things like this, you can't think. So I'm not too clever. What I'm going to tell you now is, hey, this guy's too clever. I'm not, wallah. I tell you, I'm not clever. I am not benefiting from other people's experiences. I have been watching your TV debates on these topics. People send me the videotapes. I watch them from Britain, from America. And I'm getting educated by those debates. I said, what's wrong? Why don't these people tell the fellow, you know, to the, the when questioned, what is it that's creating such, such, such temper, such anger in you? What makes you so angry? So the guy says, you know, he spoke slanderous things and he stored filthy language. One of these programs I'm watching, the nearest a brother came to answering. He's prodded. What did he say? And I watch his face. See, the camera was on his face. And I can see that he's in hell. You know, he doesn't know how to get out of that situation. So he takes a deep, he said, he, what, what, what is it? So he said, he used word like Ben Chod. <laughs> 50 million people, the Americans are listening. What did it mean to them? Nothing. And you get enraged, you want to go and kill the man for that? What did he say? I said, our cases have been going by default. If you read the book, here, if you took the right approach, the approach even now is not too late. I will show you ways and means very cheaply you can get things done, very cheaply. Not with the gun, not with the bomb, not with the stone. Very cheaply by God. I show you how it can be done. I said, you should have contacted one of these Tory MPs. Tory, you call it Tory. You know this conservative party, Margaret Thatcher's conservative party. Tory, how you pronounce it? 
story. One of the story MPs and showed him, he says, look, have a look at this, sir. Our iron lady, our prime minister, this fellow Rushdie, show him the page, open the page, page 269. He calls our Maggie torture. Torture, not Thatcher, torture. One sentence, one word sentence, torture, full stop. Then he calls her Maggie the bitch. You know that? He is calling our Prime Minister Maggie the bitch and he got away with it. Then on page 80 of his book, he says the British. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how I'm going to say this. <laughs> page 80, he says the sister, F-U-C-K-I-N-G, British. You see, he's thinking in Gujarati or Hindi. He's come, born in Bombay. He wants to use the word that word that our, our, our representative used on the TV, Ben Chod. <laughs> no, he's thinking in that language and he translates it, but not at that stage. When he uses that word, no translation. Sister fucking British. This is what he's telling them. You fuck your own sisters. British, whether you are Pakistani British or English British or Sikh British or Jamaican British, you fuck your own sisters. You take that? You take that? I said, tell this to the MP. Look at this, sir. And this guy on page 169, I'll come to it later in detail, he has sex with the queen. He even prohibits with the queen. I will come to that. I tell you, immediately the book will have been banned. Immediately. No, no arguments. But you were crying about yourself. You know, he saw my mother, he saw my fathers, our spiritual fathers, our sahabas, he did this, he did that. It's a good luck to you. You are a people, you know, you have been a challenge to us for over a thousand years. You conquered once Christian lands, never to be retaken. The whole of North Africa was Christian. Whole of North Africa, Egypt, El Morocco, Algeria, Libya, the whole lot was Christian. The whole of the Middle East, Syria, Palestine, what you call Lebanon, all this was Christian. You came and ruled Spain for 800 years. You knocked at the gates of Vienna. You have it a challenge. And even now, when you are down and out in the gutter, even now you tell the guy, he says, look, sir, don't drink. Drinking is bad. Gambling is bad. No dating, no dancing, no courting. Don't eat the pig. Don't you? Walata kulu salasa. Don't say Trinity. Look, you are a thorn in his side. Now for a change, your own child, one of your own, he's put a pineapple up your backside. See how it feels now? He's getting sadistic pleasures. He's getting pleasures in our pain. You cry, you wail, you burn books, you march, he's happy. He's getting a subtle revenge on you through your own. The way was to turn the tables. Bas, I don't know how you address them. I don't know how you address them here. I would say, Bas, Barpaka Saheb. Look what this guy is saying about you. Not about me, my mother. About you, your mother. Your sister, your wife, your daughter. You show him and you see how he reacts. Some fellows tell me that the British are insensitive. They are insensitive. They have grown a thick skin. You can tell them what you like. You can swear them as you like. They don't react. I said, don't take a chance. You're making a mistake. He's highly sensitive. But his sensitivity is selective. Where it affects him, I will give you illustration examples. Right. So generally, they pose us the question, have you read the book? And when we say no, they have a big laugh. They have a big laugh. 
Now for a change, you should ask them, have you read the book, sir? He says, no, and you are armed with this booklet of mine. You just memorize some of these statements, verses, and you quote him. He says, you know, sir, the first page of satanic Salman, satanic verses, first page, chapter one, page one. He says, a direct quotation I'm giving you, direct quotation from the book, page one. Don't go far. Start with page one. You have been going too far. You know, you have been going to page 268 and 200, 300. Don't go that far. Start with page one. If you have been reading, you can start with page one. Even before page one, you can start with his prologue, his prophecy about his own destruction. Not a place to rest his foot upon. No place for him. No peace. That's what he's saying. He's prophesying somebody is making him to write. So look, this is your end. This is your destiny. That's the first page, really. But he doesn't number it. So we take chapter one, that, that page, first page. He says, proper London. This place here, London? Are we in London? Yeah, proper London. Bye. Here we come. Those bastards down there won't know what hit them. Which bastards? Londoners. You Londoners are bastards. Whether you are Pakistani Londoners or Sikh Londoners or English Londoners, what Londoners are you? If you are a Londoner, you are a bastard and the things are coming down to destroy you. Direct quotation. Now, how does he feel? He said, look, he's calling us all bastards. You accept that? If it came from you as a Pakistani or as an Arab, the guy will punch you on the jaw. You know that? But this is a son-in-law. He married your sister, your daughter, a British girl. So you have to take it from him. No? You see, we people from the East, we, we seem to respect our son-in-laws, our brother-in-laws more than our own children. You know that? Because he is my son-in-law, my daughter's happiness is at stake. He is my brother-in-law, my sister's. This is, this is our mentality. Is that the English mentality too? I don't know. But he, they have a, some special feeling towards this satan, satanic Salman. So he starts with bastard, very mild. But I said, wait a little till he gets warmed up. Let him get warmed up. That's first page that was. He uses on that first page 16 Hindi words. 16, one, six. For which he gives you no meaning. And you lap it up. I'm talking about the English now. The Hindi, maybe some Hindu. The, our young people, what will they understand? Yar, bhai. Huh? What will you understand? What is he talking about? No, no. <laughs> if I read it to you, it's, it's, you can't imagine, you can't imagine anybody taking this book up, paying 15 pounds, the fool, he pays 15 pounds for this book, and he reads this. I read the first paragraph. See what you make of it. To be born again, sang Jibreel Farishta, tumbling from the heavens. First you have to die. Hoji, 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 Hoji. The Englishman understands what he's saying. Hoji, Hoji. <laughs> to land upon the Buzumi earth, first one needs to fly. Tata, Takatum. The Englishman laps it up. Very nice. Very nice. What? Indian spice. Huh? Oh. Still the paragraph is not finished. How to ever smile again? At first you won't cry. How to win the darling's love? Mister, without a sigh. Baba, if you want to get born again, just before dawn, once winter's morning, New Year's day, or thereabouts, two real, full-grown, living men fell from a great height, 29,002 feet, towards the English Channel, without benefit of parachutes or wings out of a clear sky. And this is a masterpiece of the English language. Hmm? 
Yes, for which gets a book a reward. He gets a book a reward for that. And it carries on 16 words. And by the time I finish up, I said, you know this guy here, he spattered the whole book, over 100 different exotic Indian words. And the choices of the language from the gutters of Bombay, or the sewers, sewers, you know? Sewer pipes from the sewers of Bombay. Page 80. He says, hijras, chutias, shits. <laughs> the Englishman, I want to know what is he lapping up? He's telling the guy, hijras, chutias, shits. He yeah, understand shits. So he senses the other thing must be also <laughs> something. <laughs> but what does he know what he's reading? And these poor fools, the French, will translate that into French with hijras chutia shits, and the German will hijras chutia shits. And our Jewish brother and cousins in Palestine, in Israel, they, in Hebrew they will write, in Hebrew they'll say, they'll write hijras chutia shits. Shits, of course, they'll have the word for it. What are they doing? This guy has made a monkey out of everybody. Look, he's a mighty genius. He's our own. We produced him. But the British cultivated him. <laughs> he is the, they are the, his godfathers, godfathers, protectors. You know, I can't even translate this. I can translate, I know the meaning. Bulk of you think you know the meaning. You really don't know the meaning of what he's saying. Very few, very rare. What he's getting away with. We should ask the Penguin publishers, Sir, do you know what he's saying? You haven't translated, he hasn't given you a glossary at the end of the book to tell you this word means that this, nothing. He doesn't, he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. He's getting away with murder. But nobody showed it to our, our fellow countrymen. He so said, look, this guy is making a monkey out of you, sir. Look what he's doing to you. <laughs> we must ask the Josephine Pauline Thompson of the General Secretary of the PEN, you know, this society of all these essays and editors and ed writers and playwrights and all that kind of thing. They have a society called PEN, acronym for all these things. Michael Foote and the Booker Prize Committee. Ask them, what is this for which you paid this guy $800,000 or Pounds, I don't know whether it's dollar or pound, but it's 800,000, all right. As advance money. He said, this shit, don't give another printer. We will have this. We will eat this. That's what they did. Advance money. He said, look, this is for us. Reserve it for us. He's made monkeys out of everybody. And he got money in the process. <laughs> He's our product. He's a mighty genius. Now, if you say that the British are insensitive, I say, no, you're wrong. They're not insensitive. I'm reading in my country, call for ban in our local newspaper. It speak, it's a dateline from London. The news comes from London into our newspaper there. Call for ban, banning a person. Furious British MPs, I'm reading. You will find this on page nine in your book. Don't take it out now. Leave it now. Leave it now. Furious British MPs have called for American actor Mickey Rourke, Mickey Rourke, R-O-U-R-K, Rourke, to be banned from Britain. Harry Greenway, conservative MP for Ealing North, said, I hope the British government will never allow this man to set foot on our shores. Will never allow this man, this American, originating from Ireland, his grandfathers, the great grandfathers had migrated to America. He's an actor. And they won't allow him to come into Britain, ban him from coming to Britain. I'm shocked beyond belief, he said. Greenway says, I'm shocked beyond belief. The MPs were particularly incensed by his use of a four letter word. Because that guy used a four letter word. Mickey Rourke, to describe Mrs. Margaret Thatcher's policies. That's all. Not for her, not describing Margaret Thatcher, but her policies. 
He used a four-letter word. You know what the four-letter word is. Anybody don't know, put up your hand. You don't know what the four-letter word is. You all know, thank God. For a four-letter word, they're so incensed, they won't allow him to land in Britain. But Rushdie does one better than that. He uses the same four-letter word, the same four-letter word for which the Mickey Rourke can't come to, to Britain, but he improves upon Rourke by making it active. That guy said F-U-C-K, he ends it by I-N-G, ing. The first word gets stuck in the throat of the British and the second one goes down, slips down easily because he makes it ing fucking policies. Can you imagine? No, double standards. No, no, they didn't know. He uses four, in half a paragraph, he uses that word four times to describe Margaret Thatcher's policies. Listen. Oh, oh, full stop. That's a sentence, master of speech. No, 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 it is. <laughs> look, the shorter the sentence, look, they tell us, you know, in language writing, if you can, oh, full stop. That's a masterpiece. It is. If you know about writing, you'll agree. Says, no, that's a master. Oh, full stop. She's radical, all right. Talking about Margaret Thatcher. She's radical, all right. What she can fucking achieve is literally dot, dot, dot. I'm only quoting direct quotation. Direct quotation. I'm not going to add any words of my own. Because I told you in my book here, it's unexpurgated. I don't interfere, I don't improve, I don't try to add or delete or may soften, nothing. These quotations are unexpurgated as they are in his book. You can check it up. And if you find, if you find that I'm pulling a fast one on you, every mistake you take out, 100 pounds for you. He said, no, he didn't say that. He didn't say that 100 pounds at a time. Find out. Any typographical error will be accepted. But a misquotation, 100 pounds for you, for every mistake you find. Check it up with his satanic verses. <laughs> is literally dot 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 from fucking Surrey and Hampshire dot 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 nobody has ever tried to re replace a whole fucking class before dot 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 no no when I say dot dot it's there in the book dot 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 three dots dot 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 this country your Britain that's stuffed full of fucking old corpses page 270 four fuckings in half a, half a paragraph and the British accept it. You know why? Because they don't know. You didn't educate them. You didn't show it to them. This is what I want you to do. This little booklet. Any guy who talks to you says, Boss, sir, come. Come and have a cup of tea with me. Look, sir, what does he say? How does he speak? About us. About our people. And you say he's got the freedom of, of speech and expression. Unlimited. Absolute. Is it absolute? He can swear anybody's mother. He can swear you. Ask him, is it right? Ask him, ask them. But they don't know. By God, they don't know. These authors, these so-called uh, giants of British literature, they don't know. They haven't read the book. He uses that word 52 times in this book. 52 times. F-U-C-K-I-N-G, 52 times. Open page 11 now, that book of mine. Open page 11. Page 11, you must have the book with you. We made it that every seat that one would take will have a book there. Page 11, you have a look there. Every letter of the alphabet, 52 times he's used that filthy, dirty word. 52 times, one for each week of the year. He didn't miss that. One for every week, if you take it up. Kalma padho uska. One for every week. 52 weeks in a year, one for every week. Starting with A, A, under A, under A, you see it there. <laughs> Fucking A. Full stop. Page 245. And carries on. Mm. Allies. Mm. Americans. Mm. Argentina. Under B. Mm. Beatles. Mm. Bedpan. Under C. <laughs> under C. Class. And again. Mm. Creep, mm, 
clowns, mm, commandos. You got the pages there. Look, check it up. If one statement is false, 100 pounds for you. You can mint money without costing you anything. <laughs> Next page, page 12. You see and the diff and the F and the D. What a thing, what a book. Do you want me to go through it? You want me to go through with this? Huh? And he wins a Booker Award. He gets $800,000 advance money for this. <laughs> Literary masterpiece. No, no, you read it. <laughs> what can I say? I'm forced to say fucked up the English language. The bastard. <laughs> what does he say about our Iron Lady, Mrs. Margaret Thatcher? You know, <laughs> I don't know why, my wife, she is not educated. She is not educated. But she has a special liking for Mrs. Thatcher. When Mrs. Thatcher appears on the TV screen, all stations close, all stop, all work stops. She must listen to her. You know, maybe it's her militancy, her forcefulness, the clarity of her expressions. She is very clear. She loves Mrs. Thatcher. My daughter, she loves Mrs. Thatcher. They don't understand her policies. Look, you might want to question me. Don't, please, don't question me about her policy. I don't understand myself. But I also admire her. You know, the way she speaks, I like. I like that lady. On page 269, he says, this torture, Maggie the bitch. Maggie the bitch. I'm asking, is that right? To call the leader of your nation a bitch. You call her torture? Maybe, maybe Mrs. Thatcher can take it. She knows she's so big, she's so great. What is the dogs barking? Let them bark. Call her a bitch? Maybe she can take that too. But I'm asking, the feelings, the feelings of her dear son, Mark. You tell him, that you are a son of a bitch. Because if mother is a bitch, <laughs> so no, no, I'm not saying it. Rushdi says that you are a son of a bitch. <laughs> By God, I tell you, he'll punch you on the jaw, break your jaw. I have seen him on TV. I know what he looks like, a great footballer, when he was in South Africa. You say that, look, I, I say, I'm not I'm saying it, sir. Mark, these are not my words. Rushdi says that you are a son of a bitch and give you one on the jaw. What about the feelings of her, her darling daughter, Carol? You tell her that Rushdi says your mother is a bitch. How would she react? I ask you. No feelings? You have no feelings. They have no feelings? What are they made of? Stones? No, they are human just like you and us. By God, I tell you they will react. I didn't hear. Iron lady, she's iron lady. I said, she can take it. But now, what does Islam say to that? What does Islam say? Allah tells us in the Holy Quran, do not defame nor be sarcastic to each other. Nor call each other by offensive nicknames. This is our teaching. Don't call people by offensive nicknames. Iron lady, maybe it's an honor. You say, look, you know, she's tough and strong. You know, she can do more than a dozen men's job. She's great. She takes it as a compliment. Torture, is that a compliment? We know it's not. He's distorting Thatcher to torture. Allah says in the Holy Quran, where in Surah Hujurat, where do you find Hujurat? In the book, in the Quran. How do you find Hujurat? I said, look, you, if you have this book, you must have it. You live in this country without this book? I don't know how to, what, I, what I can tell you. This book here by Abdullah Yusuf Ali, this translation, 
at the back of it has a, a very comprehensive index. Somebody gives you a reference, Hujurat, and the H look for Hujurat. It'll tell you chapter 49. 49 is easy to find because every page is numbered. Every page is numbered. Once you find 49, I say ayah number, verse number 11, easy to find. So you read the Wala Tana Bazu Bil Al Qab. And do not give, do not call people by offensive nicknames. Teaching you. Or another place under slander. Don't slander. Give you references. Don't backbite. Gives you references. What do you want to know? Anything you want to know, everything here is on your fingertips. And this is your privilege to have this for five pounds. Almost 2,000 pages for five pounds. There are fools who are paying 15 pounds for 547 pages. The satanic Salmans, satanic verses, 547 pages. Thick, these are thick pages, cheap pages, cheap paper. They are out to mint money. The cover is beautiful. The cover, as you see, is very beautiful. It is beautiful. You know, I mean the coloring, the, the production is good. But it's only a paper, piece of paper. This is hardcover, solid, gold written. This is paper, but however, it looks very nice. 547 pages of filth, rubbish, for 15 pounds. This 2,000 pages, 5 pounds. 2,000. This is Fletcher, Bible paper. But most of you, I, don't, I know you haven't got it. You haven't got this book. You have to arm yourself. They are available outside. We made it easy for you. Don't go start hunting for this book. You won't find it at Foils. If Foils had it, they'll charge you 50 pounds. Make it impossible for you to buy. Five pounds outside here is highly subsidized. Get it. For yourself, for your neighbor, for your employer, as a wedding present, as a birthday present, there's no better gift you can give to your family, friends, and even to your employers, even the non-Muslim. Five pounds, five pounds, five pounds. Take them, one at a time, two, four, five, ten, take them. Keep them. Maybe you might not be able to repeat the five pounds for 2,000 pages. This is 15 pounds for 547 pages. This filth and rubbish. So Allah says, don't defame people. Don't call people by offensive nicknames. What about bitch? Calling a person a bitch? You call, you, you besmirch the name of a fair lady in these terms, that she's a zania, bitch is a zania. Other words, you know, softer words, they call them tat, they call them call girls, call them hookers, whore, harlot. This guy, he calls her a bitch. In the house of Islam, anybody making such a, an attack upon anybody's personality, he must produce four witnesses. So and says a bitch, produce four witnesses, eyewitnesses. And after having given their evidence, if under cross-examination, if one of them fails, only one out of four, one fails, everybody gets 80 lashes. Everybody gets 80 lashes each. If one guy fails in cross-examination, this is proof false, everybody gets 80 lashes. You call us barbaric. Tell him, this is barbaric. We want to protect your mothers, your sisters, your wives, and your daughters from, from any kind of besmirching of their character. And you call us barbaric. We are barbaric. You are civilized. Anybody, everybody's mother, sister, daughter, wife, you can call them bitches, whores, harlots, what else? <laughs> Hookers, tats, what else? What is this? What have you come to? You civilized people, cultured people. 80 lashes each. He does not even leave our, our queen, her majesty, the defender of faith. She is the defender of faith. Our queen, my queen, as a British subject, ah, my queen. He has sex with her. Listen, listen to this spicy piece. We, we should read to the British. Say, Look, this is what he says. He doesn't even spare our queen. Chamcha, I'm quoting, direct quotation. Chamcha, that's him. If you read the whole book, then you know, there are, he plays different roles. Like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He goes as... Uh, Jibril Farishta, that's him. 
Chamcha is him. But in both cases, he's like Mr. Hyde. You saw Dr. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, he's Hyde, Hyde all the time. But he makes people to say words, Chamcha. He makes one of his characters say, Chamcha. He found himself dreaming of the queen, of making tender love to the monarch. She was the body of Britain. Who? The queen. She was the body of Britain, the avatar of the state. She is the avatar, the spirit of the state. And he had chosen her, joined with her. He joined with her. In holy matrimony? In what? In what? He joined with her. She was his beloved, the moon of his delight. Page 169. What is he saying? He joined with her. You might find some of these clever Alex, you know, who come along and say, look man, uh, you know, you are exaggerating. You don't know what you're talking about. Join could mean in, in prayer. They'll all pray together. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, please, please, please. You see, every book is its own best commentary. Every book. You ask any Christian, he will tell you that the Bible is its own best commentary. I will say the Quran is its own best commentary. And by extension, the satanic verses is its own best commentary. You know, the book itself, if it can reveal the secret to you, you don't have to look for it outside. The meaning, you don't look for it outside. Let's see how he uses his word joined in another place to tell you what he means. In case you misunderstood, you're so dense. Or such a pervert, you know, you want to exonerate anything he says because you are, he's your God. Whatever he says, you say, no, I support him. So if you want to support him, now listen now. He says, I'm quoting, direct quote, page 479. <laughs> wild donkeys, wild donkeys, fucking wearily and dropping dead, still conjoined. Joined, conjoined. What did he say? What did he do to the queen? What did he do to our, our queen? You take it? You accept it? You are not inferior. You, you don't feel hurt. There's something wrong with you. If you live in a country, you must be loyal to that country. Otherwise, get out. If a country is worth living in, it is worth dying for. Otherwise, get out. You have to be loyal to your rulers. This guy here, what he does to our queen, and you don't feel enraged. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with the British. Tell him so. There's something wrong with you, boss. I think, what, is, what has happened to you? Cry with him. Cry for him. Cry. Make him to cry. Cry with him. Don't cry about yourself. Cry for him. What this guy has done to him, his benefactor, his godfathers and his godmothers, what he's doing to them. They are now reading this book in public. This is an obsession. Marianne Wiggins, his second wife, American. I had read her statement before she ran away also. She also had enough of this guy. First he, what would he did to, uh, uh, if I have the chance I'll tell you what he says about doing to white women. What he did to first one and he did to the second one. But Marianne Wiggins, she said, if I was free, if I was not his wife, I would have read it all over Britain, place to place. At the present moment, there is a woman called Susan Sontag of this literary guild. She's reading it in public in New York, religiously, daily. She's gathering people, men and women, black and white, young and old. So listen to this new Bible of theirs, the satanic Bible, the satanic verses. She's reading it to them. And there is a young man, an Afro-American. He's listening. He's very attentive. And she's reading from the book. She says, she's reading, I'm quoting, page 261 of the Satanic Verses. White women. White women. Never mind fat. Jewish or non-differential. White women, we are for fucking and throwing over. 
This is, I'm reading page 261 of the satanic verses. That, that she is reading to the public and the boy is listening. White women. No man fat means, you know, they look like a lump, a bag of potatoes, you know, sexually not very, very desirable. Hmm? Or Jewish with a poly nose, crooked nose, don't worry. Non-differential, you can't make out the difference whether she's Swiss or German or French or English, what? You can't make out the difference. The only qualification is she must be white. If she's white, they are way for and throwing away. So this young man, he hears, and he's out for mischief with five other friends of his. He's going to the Central Park in New York. A white woman, very athletic, she's doing jogging. She wants to keep herself fit and trim. So they see her, and it triggers the fellow off. This is it, man. The Bible says, Satanic Salman's Satanic Verses says, white women. No man fat, Jewish or non-differential. This is nice and trim. So they go for her. Like a pack of wolves. And one fellow bashes her on the head and she falls unconscious. And they gang raped her one by one. And when they're caught, they said that the pleasure that they got in the sweat and the blood and the gore, it titillated the taste. You're programming people, can't you see? With full this is how you program, create devils, morons. Brainwashing, they're being brainwashed. You want this to be read to your mother, your sister, your wife and your daughter? And you penguin, why, why, what's this? Peter Mayer of penguin, Viking. You gave this fellow $800,000 to tell the world that your mother, your wife, your sister and your daughter, they were four and thrown away. What has happened to you? How did he bewitch you? What has he done to you? How did he do it? Shouldn't you ask him? Shouldn't you ask anybody, how do you do it? Whenever white rulers were shown that, they said, no, ban the book. What are you doing? You're going to program people. They will be looking for white women. Wherever they say white women, you know what they are for. So they went, what is called, wilding. On the 8th of May, Times Magazine, if you can lay your hands on it, it says, Wilding, new word. They invented a new word. Means they went wild, they went berserk. Like a pack of wolves, wolves uh, smelling blood. What are you doing? What are you doing to the world, to mankind? And Mrs. Thatcher, just recently, I'm reading this, Monday, September 11th. Maggie says no to sex investigation. I don't know whether you read the, you're in your newspapers. Dateline from London again. She says no to sex investigation in Britain. There is a society or a body, this is Mrs. Thatcher has said no to plan for the biggest ever investigation into the sexual habits of Britons. They want to know the preferences of the British men and women in sex. This is no, Maggie says no, you shall not do that. I admire her for that. By God, I admire her. She's Muslim. She's Muslim-like. Maybe she's reading the Quran. Because Allah tells us in the Quran, evil should not be noise abroad, broadcast, except where injustice has been done. Because once you say things, there are things you can insinuate and you can program people. Like this. Look how it, you easily people can be programmed. British girls are too easy. British girls, I'm reading from Sunday Times, one of the leading mag uh, newspapers, Sunday newspapers in South Africa, dated July 9th. It says, British girls are too easy. Latin lovers reckon there's no skill in chatting up British girls because it's too easy to get them into bed. The Italian stallions, the Italian stallions, in the holiday resort of Rimini, hold a Playboy of the Year contest, earning points for each girl they make love to. They have a contest. Prim, Catholic Italian girls merit 10 points. If you get a prim, Catholic Italian girl, if you get her into bed, 10 points for a bonk. One bonk, you get 10 points. French girls, 
If you can bed a French girl, you get six points. And if you bed a German Fraulein, you get five points. But British tourists are worth just one point. <laughs> what are you doing? Your daughters, your sisters, when they go overseas, every guy is doing it. I say, man, this is the easiest meat. What are you doing? Even if they're not, now everybody is making approaches. Like a bitch in season. That every British girl is like a bitch in season. Anybody comes, anything goes. This is what the guys are saying. You want to have a sex survey here? Here? Hmm. September 16, 1989. The Economist, your news magazine. The Economist says, a woman was raped on a London tube. You know, you're underground. She was raped. So they carried out a survey. And a survey, was sh and a survey showed that only 24% of women thought the tube safe during the day. During the daytime. Only 24% of women thought the tube safe during the daytime. And only 1% at night. You know what they're telling you? This is semantics. Playing with words. They're telling you that 99% of your mothers and your sisters and your daughters are terrified at night. 99%. But they say only 1% feel safe. Instead of saying 99% feel unsafe. The masters of language. This is how they do it. You want the world to know? You want to take statistics? Dr. Kinsey, the American, he did it. The life of the American female. The life of the American female by Dr. Kinsey. I read it. I read it, but I will not allow my wife to read. Fortunately, she can't, but I will not definitely allow my daughter to read. Why? Because by reading that stuff, it's going to pollute their minds. It will give them filthy, dirty ideas which they could never have imagined. I can't give you details because it might create the same problems. I will not share it with you, what I read. Dr. Kinsey's Life of the American Female. If you read it, it's the same. The British female is the same. The French female is the same. The German female is the same. On the average, it'll be the same. Gives you ideas. Filthy, dirty things. Mrs. Margaret Thatcher is wise. She says, no, you shall not do it. I take off my hat to her. By God, she's acting as a Muslim. <laughs> this is Islam. These things you don't do. And even what they call this is royal gossip that even British rags won't publish. Look, they have certain standards. You know, rags, British rags, these rotten papers, filthy, dirty newspapers, they talk about all the filth and the dirt, pornographic thing. And bigger headline, not even Britain's notorious gutter press. You have a gutter press here? Even the notorious gutter press days to print the story Yanks have read, the Americans have been reading. What? Mums the word about Zara's dad. Mums the word, keep quiet. Don't utter anything about who is the father of Zara. Who is Zara? She is the daughter of Princess Annie. Now they're insinuating that she is the bastard child of Peter Cross who was her bodyguard. Eight years ago, he committed adultery with her and he got this child, which was given out to the world as the child of Peter Phillips. I'm sorry. But she was not. She is a bastard child by Peter Cross. The picture is given. The princess is there. The princess is there. And the, the, the dashing detective is there behind the princess. What are you doing? What are you insinuating? You are destroying the life of a child. Can you, can't you see? One child. You are insinuating that she is a bastard child. She is a bastard child. At school now, eight-year-old girl, wherever she goes, if she is cross or angry about something, he says, you know, oh, I know why you are cross. Zara, I know why you are cross. Because you are the daughter of Peter Cross. Can I see? Look at her. Look at the picture. Maybe she was sullen or in a moody, this thing. Here, they give you a picture where she's sullen, she's moody. He said, you see, she's cross because she's the child of Peter Cross. And this starts where it started in Britain. One of your leading newspaper men here, the doyen of British newspapers of the Daily Mail, columnist, Nigel Dempster. 
he goes to America and he makes these insinuations. He says, Mr. Dempster was offering his expert opinion on the recently announced separation of Annie from her Mark Phillips, her husband, the undisputed father of Annie's son, Peter, age 11. Undisputed. He's got, he's got it blood tested. Can you imagine? He says now he's undisputed. How do you know he's undisputed? But now he's, he's undisputed. He's, he's giving the guarantee that the 11-year-old boy is undisputed his father's son. Asked by an interviewer to explain the breakup of the marriage, Mr. Dempster said, the problems dated back to the birth of Zara and cited long-standing allegations of an affair at that time between Annie and a dashing detective, Peter Cross, who was then her bodyguard. The newspaper says it's an old trick. Get the story published over here, means in America, first, and then you can write about it at home in England. He said, you know, the Americans say, I'm not saying anything, the American newspaper said that Zara is the bastard child of Peter Cross. Can you do that? In the house of Islam, can you get away with that? By God. But this, we want to protect, we want to help you, we want to teach you, but you can't teach, you can't help if you don't know the book yourself. We don't know our own book. We don't know the games that they're playing to be won. Once you know, you can de deal with the matter better. So, we are told, Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu, say, O you who believe. Ajitanibu kathira minad zan. Say, avoid of much of suspicion is possible. Inna ba'da zan ni ithmun. Because in most cases, suspicion is a sin. And do not spy upon one another. And do not backbite or slander one another. Is there a single one of you? Is there one of you who is prepared to eat the meat of his dead brother? That's what you are doing. The person is not there to defend himself or herself. You are eating your dead brother's meat or your dead sister's meat. Allah is asking, is there one of you? Who's prepared to do that? Eat his dead brother's meat. Even cannibals don't do that. They love your meat, love my meat, but not his brother. And carry and dead meat at that. Fakari to muhu. Says, stop. Nay, they will abhor it. Unko karahat hoge karahat. They wouldn't like it. What the Allah says, fear Allah. Stop it. Inna Allah wa tawabur rahim. Even now, Allah is off forgiving, most merciful. Jo ho gaya to ho gaya. What has happened in the past has happened. Stop it. No more. This is barbaric. This is barbaric teaching. These are satanic verses. The Khabi says these are satanic verses. This is satanic? Is this satanic? Or you are satanic? Who is satanic? What is satanic? No, the trouble is also with us. We have let the Quran down. We don't know our own book. This ayah, how many of us have read? How many of us are trying to live by it? Very few. You know why? We are not programmed with it. To be programmed, you read. You read and you become aware and implement it in your life. This was from Surah Hujurat. Again, chapter 49, ayah number 12. Don't spy. Don't snoop. No snooping. No slander. This guy, he spares nobody. He spares nobody. This is some type of sickness. I think there's a special word for it. A man who hates everybody, anybody, everybody. Even himself. If you read, he hates even himself. There's something sickness. He is a case for a psychiatrist. But he is an evil genius for writing. And there are conspiracies at work. Conspiracies. People are conspiring for this. They want this to be done. They want this guy to do. They gave him advance money beforehand. So come on, man. Write this book. It's a grand idea that now you can slaughter the Muslims with filth. He is, I said he spares nobody, even my Hindu cousins. My ancestors were Hindus. I come from Bombay, India. My ancestors were Gujarati Hindus. I'm thanking Rajiv Gandhi. We all Muslims, we must thank Rajiv Gandhi for banning the book. But I'm telling him in my little booklet, I says, Rajiv, you have done yourself a great favor. We, I will not attribute motives to him. Oh, you know, he wants to carry favor with the Muslim voters. No, 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 don't do that. If a man has done a good deed, 
acknowledge it. Rajiv, I thank you for what you have done. Thank you very much. But this is the benefit of a good act. If you do something good, the benefits, the rewards are so much greater, you are actually helping yourself. I said, you have done yourself a great favor by banning the book. Because in that book, maybe he didn't know, maybe the Hindus don't know that he hasn't spared the gods of the Hindus. He hasn't spared the gods. On page 539, he says, a direct quote I'm giving you now. Here was a lecherous drunken Rama, the god of the Hindus. Rama is the seventh incarnation of God, according to Hindu philosophy. Krishna is the eighth incarnation of God. Buddha, the ninth incarnation of God. Rama, here he calls him lecherous, obsessed with sex, drunken, alcoholic. Rama and a flighty Sita, his wife, worshipped by millions of Hindus as a goddess. She is a flighty woman. Flighty doesn't mean flying away from, from, from sexual approaches. Flighty means one who is easily excited, easily aroused sexually, like a bitch in season. Randy. This is what he's saying. Flighty, see, go and look up your dictionary at home. Flighty. Flighty doesn't mean flying away, flying into, into <laughs> illicit sex. And the, while, the Ravana, while Ravana, the demon king, was depicted as an upright and honest man. The devil is an upright and honest man. The gods of the Hindus, he is a lecherous debaucher and drunkard. And his wife is a whore. Hale. That's what he's implying. Jibreel, that's Rishti. Now he's taking the role of Jibreel. He's Jibreel. Gabriel. Jibreel is playing Ravana. He plays the part of the demon king, but as a saint. The saint he makes into a devil, and the devil he makes into a saint. And he takes the role of the devil becoming a saint. George explained in fascinated horror, looks like he's trying deliberately to set up a final confrontation with religious sectarians, sectarians. Knowing he can't win. Look, he's writing, Rushdie is writing this. A prophecy about himself that look, he says he's doing this. He's trying to create a play, a play within a play, a dream within a dream, so he can get away with this. I was only dreaming. You know when he had sex with the queen? He was only dreaming. He didn't literally do it. That's how these, these perverts will say, look, he was only dreaming. I said, you Khabis, when he wrote it, he wasn't dreaming, was he? So it's a dream within a dream. So he said, look, it was a dream. This guy dreamed and that other one dreamed left out other dreams. He says, a final confrontation with the sectarians, knowing he can't win, that, that hell, he'll be broken to bits. Page 539. That he will be broken to bits. My dear brothers and sisters, the problems generated by the satanic Salman, satanic verses, in his notorious book are too vast for any one person to handle. Please let me conclude that if such are the priests, these are the priests, the prophets of this atheist and agnostic people, these are their gods. If such are the priests like Rushdie and his fellow travelers, with a Bible like the satanic verses, God bless the congregation. And if such is the generation congregation, then God bless our queen. God save the queen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
We are most grateful to Sheikh Ahmed Didat for presenting his views and analysis of the Satanic verses. Jazakallah khair. It has been truly enlightening. How Rushdie fooled the West. How true. Weren't we all fooled? We shall begin the question and answer segment of this program shortly. At this time, I would like to invite those members of the audience who would like to ask a question to Sheikh Didat on the topic to form an orderly queue behind the microphone which has been specially provided for your use. If we could come down the right aisle to form the queue and then after you have finished your question and the question has been answered, if you could leave through the center aisle. While you are forming the queue, it is essential that the following guidelines be strictly adhered to, so I would like to, to fill you in. This will avoid the chairman having to interrupt the questioner. This is a question time, not an opportunity for you to make a speech. If you want to make a speech, then I suggest you hire a hall, such as Sheikh Didat has done today, the Royal Albert Hall, and he has graciously consented to entertain your questions. Please, only one question per visit to the microphone. If you have further questions, please just go down the center aisle and take your place at the back of the queue again, so this way more people have an opportunity to ask questions, and as well, we get a broad range of questions. Please do not interrupt the answer. Ask your question and be respectful enough to listen to the answer. This is not a debate. Finally, please keep your questions succinct and related to the topic of today's lecture, how Rushdie fooled the West. It is not fair to the speaker or to the rest of the audience to ask a question on another topic. There are many tapes which you can purchase after this question segment, which will deal with all of the other topics. There are approximately 65 tapes. If you could see Brother Shamshad, I'm sure that he could help uh, to fill any needs that you might have to get any of the videotapes. And uh, also, if you would please, uh, before asking your question, identify yourself and then proceed to ask your question. Okay. I think then uh, we're ready for the first question. If you could please, sir, identify yourself and ask your question. So I come way past the student. Um, just like to ask, should Rushdie die? My son, are you British? Are you British? Huh? You are a Britisher. Now, if you are a Britisher, you see, I said, how Rushdie fooled the West. You are one of those. And if he did to your queen, if he did to your ruler, Mrs. Thatcher, what Rushdie did, I want to know from you what would you do? What you would do? I want to know if you are a Britisher, if you are a loyal citizen of this country, I want to know from you what would you be doing? Incidentally, the topic of should Rushdie die really is a, a separate topic. And there is a video cassette. It's should Rushdie die, the Islamic verdict, which also is available outside. The next questioner, please. I would like to ask that whether satanic verses can be an insult only against Islam or it is an insult against all religions, including Christianity and Judaism? And if yes, is it not a good idea to ask the leading figures among Christian and Jews to express their views, whether they agree with the content of this book or not? Because I personally believe 
it is not insult against only Islam. It is insult against all religions, including Christianity, Judaism, and Hindu religion. And the second thing I wanted to ask, because I or other people here might have the wrong impression that you are a supporter of any political figure, could you also clarify that point? Could you repeat the second part of your question, please? I or other people might have the impression that you are personally a supporter of certain political figures in this country. Please clarify also that point. Thank you. The second, the second question first. I have no affiliation with any political parties or any religious groups. I'm a Muslim and I stand here as a Muslim and I speak as a Muslim. With regards to the first question, you see, when I said how he took the West, more specifically tonight, the British, for a ride. Now, the British, you can't say the British are only Christians. My Muslim brothers say they are British. The Jews in this country say they are British. The atheists say they are British. So I said, look, everybody is involved. You don't have to carry any religious label, affiliation, to specifically address you, says, now look, you, you as a Jew, you know, you are being attacked. You as a Christian are being attacked. I said, the whole of humanity, or the whites in general, and we Muslims in particular, everybody is attacked. So we don't have to start separating. I said, now, where is your stand? You as a Britisher, whether you are an atheist, or a Muslim, or whatever you are. If you are a Britisher, you live in this country, you have been enjoying the benefits of this land, I want to know what is your stand, what must you do? And I told you, I spelled it out for you. The thing we have to do is to educate the people. About the book, when the, he opens his mouth, Rushdie, so come, 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 let us talk. This is what I'm suggesting, that you call the people for a dialogue. Sit down, man, give him a cup of tea, give him your bhajas and samosas. I don't know whether you understand that. You see, you ask the Pakistani what I'm talking about, you know. I don't know whether you are from Iran or from where, what, what the bhajas and samosas, whether you understand. But our bhajas and samosas will do the trick. Give it to the guy, give it to the guy, and talk to him. <laughs> Inshallah, the job will be done. I 100% agree with what you say, and I, th and I think it's a very good idea that in rational debate, it's pointed out that this book is insult against all the religion, not only Islam. The whole of humanity, the whole of humanity. Could, could we have the next questioner, please? Would you identify yourself, please? Assalamu alaikum. My name is Khalil. I am British. We say Rajdi how he fooled the ways. But so far, you know, Mr. Jadat mentioned he's a genius. To me, my judgment after what I've heard from you, he's an idiot. But country that back him, he has been insulting to so many religions, Hindu, Christian, white, and so on. Now, for them to back him back the book, what would you call those people who support him to let the books go on? Me, as a Muslim, I say he should be banned from writing because no, 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 no. he has I, caused... The thing is now, you educate the people, the people in power. I said, they will do the rest. If you had shown to Maggie what he says about Maggie, you didn't do it. You didn't do it. You didn't tell the people, he said, look how he's abusing our queen. Did you? Anybody did it? Did anybody go and tell the people, he said, look what he's doing to our queen? He they, are too, they are tolerant in this country. This is the problem. Are we fine? They are tolerant. They can accept, like we say, the iron lady. There they isn't a, a Britisher you can go and tell him that he's the son of a bitch. You go and tell him and see how tolerant he is to you. <laughs> Would, would you identify yourself, please, and ask your question? Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Sheikh Didat. Like all Muslims, I'm incensed by what Rushdie has written, and I feel I must protest. According to what you said during your marvelous lecture to the Quran, we cannot nickname people or mimic, is that right? Then how, how would I feel when I read your book on the first line, refer to Satanic Salman and the picture with the horns and the hat. Is that against Quran or not? 
Could you please clarify that point for me? Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me say, look, what he did to me. See, if I swore you, anybody will justify you swearing back. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. If I swore you, you swear me. You swear me, I swear you. And people will say, well, you know, you just can't help. That guy did it to me. What he did to me, my natural reaction, I'm not perfect by God, by far from perfect. I'm, I'm. Could we have quiet, please? Excuse me, you had your chance. If, if you would like to ask a question, please go to the back of the queue. Could you please be quiet? You had your chance. You asked three questions. Now, you, why don't you line up? Why are you sitting there like a dead duck? You know? Why don't you line up there? You get your turn. You. Line up. Take your turn. Then we know who you are, what you're talking about. See, shouting from there. Now he's discussing. He's discussing strategy. However, look, my son. I am like anybody else, like you, like anybody else. I am no saint. And I am not perfect. I am telling you, this is what Islam teaches. I, you, everybody, you must try to the best of your ability to live by it. Let's say to a degree I have fallen short of that requirement. I have done it. I have done it. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Next. The next questioner, please, if you would identify yourself. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Omar. I am a Muslim. I need no other identification except the title that Allah and His infinite wisdom, power, and grace has given to me, and that is that I am a Muslim. I heard much of what you said, and I agreed, and I heard much of what you said, and I was hurt and disagreed. I was pained for the children that were here and the language. Of course, we live in a world where language such as that is often used. But what pained me the most was when I heard, if I can quote you, and please allow for my inaccuracies, sometimes I am often mistaken. If you live in a country, you should be willing to die for it. Well, there are many countries in which I'm willing to live, but there's certainly only one cause for which I'm willing to die. Please clarify yourself if you could. Yes. Thank you. You see, I made a statement that if a country is worth living in, it is worth dying for. I did say that. Islam teaches us that if you can't live, you can't practice your religion, you can't do things right, then you make hijrah. Allah tells us in the Quran that his earth is vast. You know, for provision, he will provide for you. Make hijrah and go. Go somewhere else. You have no right to remain. In a place now, if you are not allowed to practice your faith, your iman, our thing is now, if you are not in a position to practice your deen, you must get out. That is all. So, but if it's worth, I said, if it's worth living in, your country is at war and you sit at home and say, let the people die for you, for your children. I says, no, you must be prepared to defend the country against any outside attack. Right is right, wrong is wrong. But you owe certain loyalties to your country. If you are in Pakistan, you have to defend Pakistan. If you are in Saudi Arabia and there's conscription, in my country there's no conscription for the black man. But if there is, I can't help it. He said, look, if you live in this country, you have to fight for this country. Otherwise, get out. So this is the answer I can give you, my brother. That I said, if it's worth, if you think it's worth living in, then it's worth dying for. If it's not worth living in, then you are free. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, brother Sheikh, in bracket, Professor Didat. Uh, in your opening speech earlier, you mentioned the course you took in South Africa relating to this uh, satanic salmon. I think I am a full, in full support of what you did, and uh, I am very pleased with the success you got. But will people, say in predominantly Muslim countries, and also Muslims living in this country, follow the same course? 
taking, viewing that the book was written here, published here, which means all those uh, actors, the queen, the head of state, and other leaders who were accused or abused have read the book, presumably, or some others have read it and translated it to them. They knew it and yet they allowed it to be published. So if they didn't object to it, we as Muslims living in this country, though I'm not British, but I'm living here, should we not protest to defend our own religion, our own faith, our own belief? Uh, may I know what you think about the action of our brothers and sisters in Bradford, who really brought us to light to defend our cause? Thank you. I think you missed the point when I said that if I was here with you when this turmoil was taking place, I would have joined you in your marches, in your crying, in your book burning. I would have been one with you. Did I say that, if you remember? I said that. I would have been one with you. But now I said I have an advantage. I was far away. And I was able to, I was taking some time for me to see things. In other words, now I can formulate ideas which you in the midst of turmoil sitting on a hot stove you can't do. It's not your fault. I'm not blaming anybody. They look, why couldn't you do this? Why? I said, look, the reason is you were in turmoil. You are on the run. Like Jesus Christ. You see it in the Bible. The man is on the move. Every time he opens his mouth, people want to stone him. So he's on the move. It's a different circumstances from another man who is at peace and rest and he's able to deliver a message. So I have that advantage and experience from other people's mistakes. I'm benefiting. I said, look, this man here on the program was questioned. Have you read the book? And our heroes, almost all, they say no. So I said, no, I mustn't fall foul of that. Suppose I go to Britain uh, and I offered 50,000 pounds to BBC TV. BBC TV, I offered them 50,000 pounds to give me five minutes on prime time to give them the best of Rushdie. I said, you want to read in public? You had the blasphemous banquet? Give me only five minutes and I give you 50,000 pounds. Give me five minutes to read to you the best of Rushdie. No reply. I offered ABC and PBS TV in America $50,000 for five minutes. Give me five minutes. Why I'm able to do that is I'm benefiting from my other brother's mistakes. They made certain mistakes. I said, no, I won't do that. You know, I might just share this with you. I think Sheikh Saadi Rahmatullah one of our great philosopher poets, he was asked, he says, where did you learn all these good manners from? Your good manners. You know, you're such a perfect man that we see, you know, well behaved. Where did you learn them from? So he said, I learned them from the unmannerly. So how can you learn manners from the unmannerly? He says, no, you see, everything I see in the other man that I feel is not right, I won't do it. So this thing you did like that? I won't do that. That mistake you did? So no, I won't do that. So I learned my good manners from the unmannerly. What do you? So I was only benefiting from other people's mistakes. That is all. Thank you very much. You are great. Next questioner, please. Could you identify yourself, please? Aslam Malik. I have no question, but a request. A request. Only to Dr. Jizad, what he's doing in this world, to be translated, one share with I will research and invite everybody to come in speaker corner. Nickel Kar Khan Kaun Se, Dr. Iqbal says, Maulana Lulabi Kashmiris, in Kashmir is translated in Urdu. Nickel Kar Khan Kaun Se. Sir, could you ask your question? Adakar Rasme Shabiri. के फकरे खान का ही है फकर अंजू वो दिल गिरी आप सब का काम है निकल जाए घरों से बारकों को मस्जिदों को जहां कोई एक सफेद मिलता है उसको रुस्ते की शैतनियत से आगाह करें प्लीज रास्ता जिन्हें इंगल आई एम आई एम नॉट एन उर्दू खां बट uh, so a few words I understood was that instead of remaining in the monkeries and in the in your cholesters, you know, saying tasbih and sitting down doing nothing, he said, get out and do some work. That is what he's in, a, in essence. That's the message. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, Sheikh Ahmed. Um, it's all right, us saying, right, to stop um, Salman Rushdie for what he's done to the brothers and sisters. But don't you think he's done the damage already to us? Don't you think what he's done already is, far, is, is very bad already? So don't you think that if we did see him, her natural reaction would be to do something to him? Well, don't you think so? For what he's d done to us? Uh, you are a British, yeah? Yeah. Right. Your feelings are my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> Can we have the next questioner, please? Would you identify yourself, please, sir? Would, after all the all the things that um, that Salman Rushdie did said, and would it would it be allowed back into Islam? Would he be allowed to accept Islam again? You see, accepting Islam, this is in the hands of God. Whether Allah accepts, if you commit murder, rape, whatever. You commit a crime. Now, if you make istighfar, repentance, sincerely to Allah, Allah can forgive you. But in the house of Islam, the Sharia takes its course. Allah can forgive, but the Sharia won't forgive. You commit a murder, deliberate murder, you deserve to die. Life for life. But in the hereafter, your recompense is there. Allah says, all right, okay, you know, you sincerely repented. I forgive you. That's his prerogative. But the Sharia has no right. The Sharia won't allow you to forgive if you do a crime. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, my name is Sayyid Akrimani and I'm a British Muslim. And this question is to you, Brother Didat. You mentioned in your course of speech the Islamic punishment for adulterers and slanderers, but you haven't mentioned the um, punishment which says in the Quran for the blasphemy that Rushdie committed. And as a Muslim, and as far as my knowledge goes of the Quran, your approach to Rushdie affair is in contradiction of Holy Quran. My second question is, no, that was a statement. My second question is... That was not a question, that was a statement you made. What's do you agree question? with this? What? Do you agree with my statement? What statement did you make? What did you say? In Quran, the punishment for blasphemy against the Prophet of Allah is quite different. It's either by death or by stoning or cutting arms and legs. And that's what it says in Quran. Yes. Right, I'll answer you, my sister. We were dealing with the subject, how Rushdie fooled the West. Now, this thing I was telling you is so vast that this one person or one time you can't deal with the everything. I have dealt with this problem. Now, this will be the third tape. Third tape on the same problem. Should Rushdie die? The Islamic verdict. Should he? Should, that, that's the question. But now you have to get the tape. Can you tell us? Because no, we're all no, here. No. This is another lecture. You want me to deliver another lecture? No, just say. No, no, a few no. Wait, words. wait, 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 wait. We started here at half past two. It's half past four now. This will take another two hours. You want me to expound to you for two? Hours? Look, you no. can't. You can't just make statements. You have to get this tape. I'm only asking you if you agree with the Quranic punishment. I or you agree don't. what the Quran says, and here we deal with it in total, two hours. So you agree with then the Quranic you, punishment? I. How, as a Muslim, how can you disagree? That, that's all I, I, I want to think, I think that... I, <laughs> then, okay. then further, again, should Rushdie die? Yes. The Judeo-Christian verdict. That's a different subject. Thank now, at that subject, you said, look, what about Islam? I said, look, when I was talking about Islam, you said, what about... I said, look, wait a minute. You see, there are people who can make a hundred different statements in one 15 minutes. Unfortunately, I can't do that. You see, if I touch something, I have to ex explain to you the whole situation. So, the Islamic verdict, 
the Judeo-Christian verdict, and now you will see in the future how he fooled the West. And now each and everyone is separate, independent, but is doing a certain job. I think that also, Sheikh, I think, excuse me, sister, I think that Sheikh Didad has been very patient in answering a question that is not related to the topic. And brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask you to please remain and contain your, your questions to the topic. It is, it is unfair to ask a question on another topic which will require perhaps a couple hours of explanation. Could we have the next question, please? Assalamu my name is Tawassa Mohammed um, and I'm a Muslim Pakistani. Um, I want to ask you, is the fatwa passed by Ayatollah Khomeini, is that justified from an Islamic point of view? I don't think you understand Without English, my child. Look, we have been talking about how Rushdie fooled the West. Where does Khomeini fit in? <laughs> you said questions the, the, the topic, the topic. Look, you, if you came with the understanding, I don't know whether you understood, a challenge to the giants of the British literary world. You know, can you stomach the best of Rushdie? There was no Khomeini, no Quran, nothing. We're not bringing said the Quran says this, the Hadith says this, nothing. We are talking about how he fooled the West. And what you can do now is to educate the British what he has done to them. Let them do the job. Then they will do it for you. Could we have the next questioner, please? Assalamu alaikum wa Would you identify yourself, please? My name is Hajj, and I would like to ask a question to uh, Sheikh Ahmed Didad. He says that uh, Rashti has blasphemed all the humankind, all human beings. And even if he didn't spare the queen, we know, as he says in his book, he has use some words for our prophet وسلم, and we know that this prophet is even greater than the queen or whoever done is that is greater than the queen the prophet is greater than you i would like to know mr yeah, uh, mr ahmed did that as a muslim as a muslim because something good went on and some books have been banned i would like to know as a muslim our point of view, what should we carry on actually to do? Because many questions, the, the real question that is to be asked is whether Salman Rushdie is a Muslim or he's not a Muslim. I don't think you're reading the newspapers. Look, Salman Rushdie, he says he is not a religious man. He doesn't follow any religion. That's his verdict. He is out of the pale of Islam on his own confession. Well, now what do you want to go and ask him now? What will we ask him? He says he doesn't believe. Finish. It's over. That's what he says. He's a murtad. He's an unbeliever. So you can't treat him as a believer. What else proof you want from him now? I don't know. The whole world knows that he says he's not a religious man. He's not a Muslim. He says so. He was born in the house of Islam. You and I can be. But it's possible that you become a Murtad, you become a Christian, you become a Buddhist, you become an atheist, and you still have a Muslim name, given by your fathers. So that's his case. So where do you go from here now? Thank you very much. Ready for the next question, please? Um, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Musa from Nigeria on a visit. Um, I wanted to ask a question which has earlier on been asked. Uh, but I have an observation to do as regard the general behavior of the audience. I don't know whether that one will be accepted here. Observation. What, what is the, do you have a question related to the topic, today's topic? Uh, I have a question which has already been asked and answered. But I have an observation to do as regard the general so, behavior of the audience. Yes, I, I think that we made that quite clear in the guidelines that we don't have time for observations. And I'm sure it's an interesting one, but Sheikh Didad has rented the hall and has given his lecture and now is a question period so if we could have if you have a question related to the topic please ask it if not you'll have to keep your observation for another time uh, okay uh, it's just an observation this is not going uh, to we, uh, but thank you it's accepted thank you we're ready for the next question please so alaikum my name is muslim jafar kaku can i first of all thank you on everybody's behalf for presenting such a different way to what Islam, satanic versus 
has, is actually saying. The second thing I wanted to say was, can you make sure or do some effort in, in helping us to give this book to each and every household in Britain as well as in America or in Western countries? We will try, inshallah, but we need your support. Can you make sure in helping us? If you can, by video as well. Uh, we are publishing 100,000 in Britain for free distribution and another 100,000 in America for free distribution. I would like to see a million copies here and a million copies there. But now, we want, we are appealing, I'm appealing to you that don't kill the goose that lays the golden egg. You see, don't kill us. What you do is, how much does this book cost each? Roughly? 15 pence? Right. This costs 15 pence. Buy 10. Buy 100 at 15 pence each so you don't kill us. And you give them out on your behalf. You know, this is what you ought to do. So, that way you'll be helping us immensely. Because now I'm interested in publishing the 100,000 under, under print. But then I said, look, I want a million. Look, this book should be given out in the streets, in all the cities. Give them out freely. You know, you buy them at cost price. If you can publish them yourself cheaper, we are giving you an open order inside. We want no royalties from you. We have no copyrights. You publish it. You sell it. You distribute it free. No restrictions whatsoever. So if you want to do that, you can have that privilege as well. You can print it yourself. Maybe it'll cost you 10 pence. Yeah. Maybe it'll cost you 5 pence. Go ahead and do it. But help us that way. Spread the book. Inshallah, we'll help you. But if you can start a fund or something just to, pub to publicize this book and the videos, I'm sure you'll get a lot of response from people Inshallah. who want to donate to this cause. Inshallah. No, we don't want donation. You just buy it yourself. If you have got no time, buy 100 copies only. Okay. For how many? 15 pounds. Thanks so, very much. Or something, something like that. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Didat. Yes, if we could have two more questions, yeah. please. And yours, uh, well, let's say three questions, two more questioners after you. Uh, Mr. Didat, first of all, last year, uh, November, the Muslim, some Muslim scholars, Muslim ulama, did uh, contact the British government in connection with this book. So, uh, like you did in South Africa, uh, some scholars and some ulama tried to do it here, but uh, they were unsuccessful through their Democratic Party. Secondly, uh, you say Salman Rushdie, how he fooled the West. Well, all Muslims that are here are in the West, and they are part of the West. And as you have briefed us on how he has said abusive words to to people, yeah, is, there's a lot of people here that are non-Muslims, and it is mainly on, you never use the word why they insulted Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The abusive language that he used and the technique that he used, he did not use the word Muhammad. Can you explain to me why you never brought up that word Muhammad and this, I don't know, maybe you can give it to me better? I don't know. My brother, as you see, I have discovered there's a wrong policy. Your policy, our policy now is wrong. He said, you know what he called my mother? You know what you're doing? You're spreading it now. Uh. Look, the thing has spread enough, it has enough, harmed us enough. Forty Muslims have died, women have been all widowed, children orphaned. And now I'm going to say, you know what he called my mother? You know what he called my Nabi? You know what? What the hell? I said, forget it, man. That's the thing of the past. We have paid enough price for that. Now we say, look, you, sir, what is doing to you? Forget about what happened to us. Because you crying about yourself is making the guy happy. But you must Why be a fool? You are a fool when you say, now talk about yourself because he's feeling happy. He said, right, he did it to you. Forget that. That's a thing of the past. I know how I feel, how you feel. Because you must understand that there is non-Muslims also here. That's why they wanted to know why we... Don't waste Muslims time. Don't waste time. Go for the kill. Before we have the last two questions, I would like to take this opportunity uh, of course, to Sheikh, to thank Sheikh Ahmed Idad for all this time that, that he has given us. I'd also like to thank the organizers, Brother Shamshad Khan of the Interna uh, Islamic Propagation Center International, 
and members of his team who have worked so relentlessly, especially Brother Khadim Hussein, Brother Saeed, and Brother Majid Dodi, to make this event a success. Okay, if we could have the next questioner, please. Yes, if, if everyone after the last questioner can, can really go and sit down, because we just don't have any more time to, to answer your questions. Yes, this is the first one, and there is one person after him. And, uh, everybody, I'm sure. It, it's, 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 nice, it's so nice that you do have questions, but unfortunately we have to have some, some time to cut off the program. So there will be two more questions, this gentleman and one more, and the rest, if you could please sit down and perhaps we'll have, a, a, there will be other programs this week and your questions perhaps will be answered at those. Yes, sir. My name is Mohammed Salim Dadabai. I wanted to ask Amadi that is why the Saudi government and the rest of the Arab world did not support the Iranian in order to stop these Salman Rusty books. You think I know people's minds? I don't. This is the question you should ask them. Look. The question, the person who does or who doesn't, you ask him the question. Why? No, the problem, the problem is so that... Do you, do you have a question on the topic? Because we have not... We're no, discussing international politics. By talking or merely but, understanding the West, because the West have conspired against the Islam in this unity. Might make a very and we as a Muslim are not united. This might make a very interesting topic in the future, but unfortunately it's not the topic here. Yes, could we please have the last questioner? Or a pair of questioners? My name is Farhana and this is my friend Shazia. She'd like to ask you a question. Well, it's more advice than question. I put uh, do, you have, do you have a question other than yeah. advice? Because yeah, there are people is. here that yeah, have the questions. Question it is, you haven't heard it yet. I put two questions to my teachers in the school. It was one of freedom of speech, and I said, wasn't the last temptation of Christ banned in this country? Is it, is, am I wrong? Yes, you're wrong. It's not banned. What was it? It was banned. So why, why isn't this book and being also banned? democracy. Wasn't the last temptation of Christ banned in Pakistan? And also wasn't satanic verses banned in Pakistan? Isn't that respect to Christians and respect to Muslims? And that's all we demand, respect. But what is your question? My question is, why was I called into the head's office twice, and the second time I was asked, if I carry on like this, fighting for Islam, but I'll have to get chucked out? I mean, do I do, am I doing anything wrong? No, you're not. So, so yeah. why am I getting chucked out? If I do anything again, then I'm, I'm dead, aren't I? Yeah, and we want to know. I'm doing something wrong, then I'll stop. But isn't this for Islam? I would like to wish each and every one of you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.